Hey guys, I'm Francesca Lana and you're watching Pop Fusion Season 2. Hit it DJ Corey J! You know we in now, you know we good On your TV screen in your neighborhood Sit back, relax, let's kick some facts You watching Pop Fusion, yeah we back We taking over your TV screen With pop culture, we're a rarity Hottest guests leaving dope memories Fusion pop cultures and charities ha. Guess what, I have some news for you There's free food right there, junk food You see that truck? Oh, it's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top. Soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Welcome back. I'm sitting beside a superstar, you guys. You may have seen her as Tiffany Haddish's daughter, Amira, on TBS's The Last OG, which will return for season two on April 2nd, by the way. <laughs> and get this, she will soon be singing and starring in 20th Century Fox's upcoming film, Breakthrough. Please, let's welcome Taylor Mosby. <laughs> Welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. So congrats on your success so far. You're seriously killing it in the game. Thank you. We have to know, what is it like working with Tiffany Haddish? She's amazing. I mean, really at this point, we've just become like best friends. You know, she's like a second mom to me. Aww. I know when we first met, you know, we didn't know what to expect from each other because I mean, I didn't know her that well. She didn't know me. But now we have inside jokes and we're always talking her and Mr. Morgan. They're just the dream parents. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That's great. And you're booking movies? That's amazing. Can we give it up for booking movies? Like, that's legit. <laughs> Thank you. So when you got the call that you booked that gig, like, tell me about it. What was it like? Um, it had been a while since the audition, because usually in this business, you know, you can audition for something and not hear about it for weeks or months. It depends on how yeah. long it takes. So when they called, I was actually picking up my little brothers with my mom from school. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what they were going to say on the phone. So when they called me, they just said, you know, pack your bags. You're going to Canada. What? I'm like, Canada? You know, do we vacation? What's going on? And then I had to think about it. And they said, you booked the movie. And I honestly, I just cried right there at that elementary school. All the kids were worried about me. It was just, <laughs> it was great. It was oh, amazing. That's amazing, girl. I would have cried too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, honestly, like you are a singer and an actress and you're actually singing in the film too. Yes. What, what is that experience like? Like, who are your favorite singers and your inspirations on that end? The moments of it, I did not know that I was going to be singing in the movie. Let's really? Let's just get that I did not know that that was going to happen. Wow. When I, they asked me to sing in the audition. I don't know. I didn't know what it was for. I never knew that I was going to be singing in the movie, that that would be heard by people, and that I was working with Kirk Franklin. Like, the whole thing was so... Into a studio in the middle of, the middle of nowhere in Canada, and then he was just there. So he wow. ready to work, and I was like... Like, like, what's going on? Like, like, where did this happen at? I wasn't even ready. I was not prepared. But I just know that that's just a blessing. It was just a blessing. Some of my favorite singers, Bruno Mars, Jacob Collier, Sam Cooke, Ariana Grande. Mine kind of vary between two different eras of music. From nice. The Temptations, Commodores. That's just because of my, my parents. Mm -hmm. It's good music. That's pretty awesome. So with Kirk Franklin being a part of the film, is the film a Christian-based film? It is. I would say, well, yes. I mean, the story is based off of, you know, faith and um, mm. just God pulling through miracles. You know, it's a true story. So yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah, it is. That's so awesome. And speaking of faith, I noticed that in your Instagram bio, you have a Bible verse. Mm -hmm. How has faith helped you in your career? It keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. It keeps me grounded. I know that this is a really hard business. It you is. Know, because, I mean, there's lots of rejection. There's lots of seeing everyone else, especially with social media, is very hard. You know, there's just a lot going on, lots of distractions. And I have just, it gives me something to come back to every day. It's that's something great. that's consistent in my life and it just keeps me 
calm. It just keeps me sane. <laughs> yeah. No, we need that. I mean, this industry and just LA in itself is just a melting pot of so many people trying to do so many things. So yeah. kudos to you for keeping God <laughs> first and making it. Can we have Thank five to you. that? Hey. <laughs> Thank you. So at Pop Fusion TV, we love using pop culture and celebrity charities. And how would you feel that you're using your platform to give back to the community? Well, um, within my church, and I know also with PBS and with the movie, uh, we like to buy lots of groceries and then we'll just deliver them to different houses and different families that need them. Wow. Sometimes, only, you know, families within the church, just whoever really needs them. And I feel like it keeps your eyes open. You know, I like to try to pay attention to other people, you know, not only myself, yeah. you know, outside of my family, outside of my own house, what's going on in other people's lives. I feel like that's important. And also just to look out for people like me to look out for little girls like me because I know what it's like to be in certain situations so it's just doing what you can to help everybody else wow that's so amazing and how young are you by the way 16 16 can we go for being 16 <laughs> and mature and so yeah. successful already <laughs> that's awesome you know to be honest a lot of young women will definitely look up to you I'm so proud of you and your career and oh. keeping God first in your faith like that's seriously awesome thank I you I hope that you can stay grounded and continue to flourish and blossom in your career. Wishing you nothing but success, girl. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys, stay tuned. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Okay, guys, so you know we cannot go without highlighting celebrities who are giving back to the community. And today we're with Pop Fusion TV correspondent Yasmin. Hi. How are you today? I'm amazing. Thank you. How are you, Francesca? I'm doing great. So tell us, what is the T-Zone Foundation? I'm so excited to share about it because the T-Zone Foundation is a nonprofit organization founded by Tyra Banks to help young women overcome insecurities. Wow. Now, did you know Tyra Banks, as a preteen, was bullied at school because of her appearances? Oh my gosh, I would never think someone as beautiful as her would be bullied. Wow. Luckily, due to great mentors and role models, she was able to overcome it, and that, that experience helped her create the Tyra Banks T-Zone Foundation. The foundation invests in girls and young women to help them realize their ambitions and truest potential. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. What would it feel like being mentored by Tyra Banks? Can you imagine? <laughs> like, I was watching some of these videos of her being in the field. It was the uh, Lower East Side Girls School in Manhattan, and the feedback that they were obtaining was just phenomenal. I mean, wow. Tyra Banks is a role model. She's killing it, seriously. Yeah. And it's just so hard, I mean, being just in this, um, in, in this time, it's like, you know, you have to look flawless on Instagram and I can imagine being a teenager even having social media nowadays. Like, what are your thoughts about that and social right. media bullying? And, and I love that you just said flawless as well because <laughs> Tyra Banks did do a gala called Flossom, oh, which what? was actually highlighting the flaws that are actually awesome. And going back to the social media flossom, concept, love that. Flossom, right? <laughs> like, totally awesome. And then... I, you know, social media is such an ever-evolving landscape. It's the wild, wild west. Yeah. Teachers and parents do not know how to handle it. Kids, of course, are not going to come up to them if they're being bullied. Like during preteens times, we're embarrassed about saying that we are being bullied. And there are so many other pressures nowadays, like sexting, which is like another phenomenon that we don't really know how to handle. So I really think, you know, at schools, we don't have these life lessons that were learned. Like we have biology education as to how yeah, our bodies develop. How do develop. we make it in the real world? <laughs> but in the real world, especially in this modern era that we're yes. living in, that's just something that I think 
schools it starts with education need to implement a structure that builds upon like how we should communicate with each other and treat each other so relationship skills so i'm like i think it's such a great cause that Tyra Banks has launched the T-Zone Foundation to really yeah. empower girls, females, and I hope that guys can pick up on this as well as to some of the modern pressures and struggles that girls and women have to overcome. Wow, that was an amazing um, thing that you said because yes, guys and girls, because also men are getting bullied as well, young boys are getting bullied as well, and we're just honestly so grateful that you even came on and told us about this amazing foundation. So kudos to you, Tyra Banks, for starting this foundation. Yes. And thank you, Yasmin, for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me as well. <laughs> of course. We'll be right back. Hit it, DJ Corey J. You want your perfusion. You want your perfusion. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food done. Hey, what up, guys? I am Jerron, and I am pretty excited because today I am joined by Rob Mack, who you might have seen on Good Morning La La Land or the dope advice he gives on his IG stories. He is a celebrity happiness coach and a love coach, and today he's here to give some advice to all you pop fusioners who submit your videos. So let's give a warm welcome to Rob Mack. Yeah. What's up? What's up, my man? Hey, How you been? Good, great. How you doing? I'm pretty good myself, man. Awesome. All right, let's well, start with the first video. Yo, what's up, everybody? So, my worst date. Um, it was a couple years ago. I was on a date with a young lady, and it was actually not even the first date. It was a couple dates in, and I started expressing to her my love for Jesus and my love for the Lord. And she just went so left on religion, and she just started really expressing herself about how she's an atheist and how she thinks that all religions are BS and how everyone who believes in a religion is just in a fairy tale land and how. She doesn't believe that anyone can even believe any of these things. So, yeah, that day kind of ended right then and there because I am somebody who is passionately in love with my Lord and my Savior. So, I just knew I couldn't continue on. So, the date just ended right there. But Oof, that's a tough one, right? How expensive was the dinner? <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that I love the most, right? right. He's like, we gotta order food. I mean, we gotta do it at that point. Like, hey, do. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I don't. Look, I do think people can have happy, healthy relationships, mm -hmm. even though there are different religious beliefs. At the end of the day, though, the mutual respect thing and the kindness thing, that's not going to, you know, that's going to be a problem for the relationship itself. Uh, right. And, and that's like the core principle of religion anyways. Just right. Exactly. Every day. Right. So. Exactly. I mean, one of the other things I've done, too, when I've been in a similar situation is like, first of all, I think you want to, 
people learn through your shining example better than they do through your words. So I think like right. demonstrating what kindness and mutual respect looks like is always helpful. Right. Instead of just telling them, you know, that it should be nice or whatever. And, and you can't knock down something that's important to somebody else as well too. Right, exactly. It's like right. you have to be supportive of yeah. everybody. Yeah, exactly. The other thing I'll say real quickly is that, you know, sometimes it's just semantics too. Mm. I know it's tough, like if you're a Christian, you want to talk about Jesus, but sometimes you can just talk about love, you can talk right. about life. You can talk about God, and sometimes people will resonate with that instead of just going so deep on the religion right away. Or even the universe. Like, right, exactly. God is yeah. the universe. Yeah, exactly. Or money, if that's, if that's yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's God to you. <laughs> that's what it says <laughs> on the dollar bill. <laughs> God, we trust. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. See? Hi, I've been talking to a girl now for about a month, and she seems like a really cool chick. The only thing is that she has real bad breath, and I'm not talking about your morning breath. I'm talking about 24-7 bad breath. How do I approach the situation without offending her? And I really like her. Oh, man. Dude, that's a tough one, bro. You know, if her breath stinks. Oh. Or the toothbrush stink. Or like, yes, you maybe. Yeah, you maybe. yeah. 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 No. Well, I mean, that is a good point. Like, I mean, I think you always start off gentle, right? So, like, mm. I would honestly just consistently offer, like, mentos and, like, breath mints. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before I was just rude and, like. Or what if you buy her a Groupon for, like, a tooth whitening right right you know right. it's, it's not a bad idea yeah, right exactly teeth, right? yeah exactly exactly i if what if she's not taking the hints though i guess if she's uh -huh. not taking the hints at some point i'd probably recommend just like getting a physical or something like that right or perhaps you get something oh, really like garlicky or something nasty oh yeah like she has right, to brush right. her teeth that's there you go <laughs> the law reverse effect right, i love exactly. that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like slip it in there right, exactly nice. <laughs> but like, that's how, a good point yeah would you stay in a relationship with somebody who had stinky breath 24 7 yeah i mean i think you gotta you gotta get that solved you gotta solve that, right? It's yeah, like I mean, it's solvable. Like, it's not like, you know. They, they have things. Maybe yeah. lead by example. You brush your teeth, have some listerine. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think just, exactly. Sometimes I like to just put it on myself. Like, oh, I mean, I'm obsessed right. with keeping my teeth clean and my breath fresh. And hopefully she just pick up this. <laughs> <laughs> so he brushes his teeth a lot. Maybe I should keep up. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one. Yep, let's, let's go. go. So my dating question would be, if you meet a guy and he's great on paper, but you don't feel that initial spark, how many dates should you give it before you decide to move on? Or how long do you hang in there for? Ah, uh, this is Ooh. a perfect one right here. Right? <laughs> I mean, if he's paying for everything, yeah, yeah. she should stick it out. It's a good point. It's like, right. it depends on how hungry she is mm -hmm. and how broke she is. Yeah, you know, if she's paid, she probably don't <laughs> have to do one date. I mean, she's good. You right. know, it, what are they called? They're called foodie calls. <laughs> Booty calls. Booty calls. Yeah, that's the first like, time I've heard that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh no, yeah. Girls take dates just to get the food, Ooh. and that's it. Wow. You know, I'm like, you can have like your yeah. food paid for every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, feel, I mean, it's LA. It's expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But legit, I would probably say three dates. Three. Three. You know what I mean? Because I think, like the first date, of course, you're just not getting the information. The okay. second date is, I think, part of the challenge with guys is. Like you often don't have the pop and the swag that you would normally have until like two or three dates in because you're just kind of getting warmed up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. What do you think? But, but like, I, I think you can grow in love with somebody. True. So yeah, yeah. you know, don't don't write it off at the beginning. Right. You know, exactly. give it some time to evolve because yeah. you never know what could happen. Yeah. I wish I could ask her what the spark part was missing. Like, what part of it is? Is it just that he's not confident? Is yeah. not? Is it swag that's missing? Is it something else? Is it, is it the breath? Is it the breath? Yeah. Could be the breath. Yeah. Maybe he's an atheist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Remember> that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> well, we want to thank Rob Mack for coming on our show today, and we will be right back. You're watching Pop Fusion. <laughs> Sit back, relax. You know what time it is. You're watching Pop Fusion. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Guess what? I have some news for you. 
There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Hi, Francesca. Yes, we are so excited to be talking with you two today. Thank you for speaking with us. Now, Dr. Drayvon, we're going to start with you. How did you come about with your everyday peace movement? It came about through life. And as we know, life has blood, sweat, tears, and mine had some determination, <laughs> right? So I was determined to use everything that showed up in my life. And at the time, it was a lot of stuff that looked pretty bad that was showing up, but I was determined to use it to create the life of my dreams. And that's, that's right. That's how I started Everyday Peace. What are the signs that your, your uh, significant other or your partner is in love? Signs that my partner is in love is that he is spending time to really get to know me. Uh, more than just intimately knowing me, right? Beyond that, my mind, my soul, what makes me tick. He's spending time doing that and uh, how he introduces me, right? So he's kind of got like a little, you know, pep in his step when he, when he says my name and bringing that tribe together. His family, my family, his friends, my friends, making a big tribe, one happy universe we're creating. We're in love. And Rob, for you, how, how do we know as a woman or how can we know when the significant other is in it for the love? Oh boy, it's such a great question. I say you can't know for sure, right? Only experience will tell you for sure, but I would say it's first and foremost, how he looks at you. You know, without question, there's a way that a guy will look at a woman that he loves or cares very much about that is different, right? And you can feel that. You can't describe it, but you can feel it. I'd say also the way in which he talks to you, right? So Dr. Javon nailed it with, you know, is he interested in more than just what we're doing that day? Is he interested in who you are as a person? You know, so just, personally meaningful details, I think are very helpful. So it's the kind of conversations you have. It's also when you have those conversations, it's only at midnight and later, <laughs> is it, you know, so it's, you know, it's, I think it's a number of things, but those are good signs that you're probably heading in the direction of love. The bill on the first day or to split the bill on the first day. On my dates, it's cool. She can pay if you want. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm open to receive, you know what I'm saying? I'm open to receive. I would say that generally as a guy, though, you're probably gonna wanna pay, especially if you wanna set the precedent um, for it being a date. Otherwise, you know, it could just be a friendship. And how should we take that? Should we take as in splitting the, the, the bill on the first date as a spring fling? I think if this is not his best foot forth, I'm a best foot forth kind of girl. So on that first date, I really want to see you pull out all the stops. I want you to make this a nice date for me. And if you need me to pay 50% of the bill, I'm happy to do that. But if you don't and you've asked me and I know that you don't, this is just a fling and this is not what you want me to think of as a true suitor type of relationship. You're not really pursuing me. Not seriously. If I'm paying 50% of the bill and you could have paid the whole thing. Yeah. Right. Hashtag yeah. chivalry. Yeah. Hashtag. <laughs> it's still alive. Right? It's still alive. Somewhere. It's out there. It's, it's out, out there, 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 there somewhere. Yeah. And what would you say are your top three signs of a uh, somewhat or spring fling? Wow. So if I were to start at the, the bottom level, I'd say um, husband or wife. They've got a partner, boyfriend, girlfriend. It's probably a good sign. It's just a spring fling. That is not going to be a long-term relationship. Um, you know, I'd say that in addition to that. You know, um, um, where you spend time, are you spending it, as we said, like in the, just the club, the bars, mm -hmm. in bed, mm -hmm. you know? So it, I think it's that. It's also, I think, um, in 
why you spend time together, you know? And I think that's something that you only know for you and it's hard to tell why the other person wants to spend time with you, but you can notice it just by sort of when they're spending time with you, how they're spending time with you, what they're talking about when they talk. Do they actually want to talk? So do they want to talk on the phone? Do they want to talk in person or do they prefer just to get to the action or do mm -hmm. something else? So, um, you know, the question, the thing I would be sort of vetting for is meaningfulness, right? Is it, does it feel meaningful? Dr. Drayvon, what are your top signs of a spring flame? Yeah, I want to go back to what Rob said about communication. It's so important. I think, I know we're texting a lot, but I think mm -hmm. if we're not having some conversation, you know, your voice to my ear, my voice to your ear, that's a sign that we're not, we're having a fling here. If we're just communicating through texts and hookups, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. not, we're not pursuing it's a relationship. all logistics. <laughs> like, I'm going to meet you at 10 o'clock there and a text. <laughs> right. Pretty good sign to spring fling. Right. That for me is a sign that we are on a spring fling <laughs> quest, right? So that's the number one thing. I think number two, Rob already hit it to it. If we're, if we're not spending time other than the club, or the bedroom, then we're not headed towards anything but a fling. And then I just got to go back to this tribe thing because I am so big on relationships. So if we're having a relationship, if we're building a love nest here, then we, we got to get to know each other's people because me knowing your people tells me a lot about you. You know my people tells me you a lot about me. So if we're not doing that, we're just having a fling. We're keeping it isolated just amongst ourselves. This is a fling. Oh my gosh, it's such a good point. Is I remember like this Jay-Z song, you know, it was always, oh, he would always say like, is she checking for your homies? And he it means it kind of in two ways, like, is she more interested in one of your friends, <laughs> first of all? <laughs> so that's also a sign, it's a spring fling. And it, <laughs> um, but there was another case where she's actually interested in who your friends are and who your family is, like genuinely interested. So, you know, if I think if a guy does the same thing, that's also a good sign. Is he interested in your friends? He cares about them. You know, um, I think that matters a lot in terms of making the discern, sort of discerning between spring fling or love. Well, great advice. Definitely taking mental note. There you have it, you guys. Well, thank you so much for watching Pop Fusion. But before we go, check out our pop question of the day. Our pop question of the day is, if you're in a relationship with someone who has a child, what are some things that he or she is not allowed to do with your child? Hey guys, okay, so some things that I would not do if a child was not mine was anything that has to do with firsts. Don't take them to get their nails done for the first time. Don't try to teach them to tie their shoes for the first time. Don't have any lady chats, period, sex, nothing. Like, leave that to the parents. Don't rob them of first mommy moments.